able to attract funding. I know that all the other parishes seem to manage by going for match funding, by going for grants. I spend a hell of a lot of my time applying for grants for Ellswick Parish Council. And I just feel really that we've got it wrong here. And I would hope, even though I know, I realise that there is a whip on tonight, I would hope that you would have just, just take a step back and just think for a minute, are we doing the right thing here? Um, I say again, I supported the two previous votes. I had no problems in that. But I do think that you should think about it here because it may well be that the money could be obtained from other, other, other um, areas. And if that is the case, then I would think that file could reduce the amount that it was paying um, um, to Freckleton. But when you look at it, you had little Eccleston tonight saying about the fact that they feel left out in many cases. And I feel that that is the situation in most of the rural areas. So I get around the rural areas, I've got eight parishes that I represent within Farborough Council. And I know that the feeling throughout filed is that this is a living St. Anne's Council. Now, I appreciate that that doesn't apply with the Freckleton situation, but the fact is that when you look at the situation in the last 12 years since this administration has been in power, the following places have never had a penny capital. That is Singleton, Esprit, Wesham, Ellswick, Little Eccleston, Larbrick, Plumpton, um, Westby, Wharton, West, um, Wheaton, Greenhalgh, not a penny. And yet those parishes have managed themselves to apply for grants with the small amounts of match funding which they've able, been able to put forward. I'm only asking you tonight just to think again, just to defer this matter so that you can have another look at it. But the other thing which you may want to do is to look at whether or not you have a small capital allocation every year for the rural areas. I've been elected now for 36 years on this council and I'll tell you the one way to get elected in the rural areas is to have a go and say that Farborough Council does nothing for the rural areas. That is the public perception in the rural areas. And um, again, you know, I just hope that you think again. Try to make this an inclusive council and make an allocation every year for rural support. You. I'm not sure whether you're seconding Councillor I'm happy Olds to second Councillor Or whether Olds. it needs an, uh, a seconder because it's a direct uh, opposition. Could I have some advice, please? Can we just take Councillor Odds? Your deferral was an amendment then? Yes. Yeah. Um, can I just take Councillor Hayes that you're seconding that amendment? Yes. Right, so the, the amendment on the table now that's been debated is to defer this. I think Councillor Rhodes said deferred until all the queries. all the queries could be addressed, relevant, but not necessarily to object wholeheartedly no. to the allocation. Uh, Mr Mayor, yes, that, that is what I was saying, that um, I believe um, that the parts group have not applied for any external funding, so I believe it's premature, and I think they should be given an opportunity to apply for some external funding. And I think that we should be checking out uh, whether the capital held by Freckleton um, can be used, because um, certainly the document I've seen today, and I've only seen it today, I do intend to speak to a solicitor about it tomorrow um, uh, doesn't uh, in any way prohibit use of the capital. Um, now I'm not an expert and I'll freely admit that but I do intend to send that document to a solicitor tomorrow to ask whether it can be varied. As I say I'm a trustee of a trust in Kirkham and we have varied our trust and I do know other trusts that have been varied and uh, okay. you know I give us an example example at this council, Melton Grove. Thank you. Thank you for that personal explanation. I'm just clarifying once again then that you have an amendment on the table to defer the item subject to further investigation and, and clarification of uh, grant funding. And no. Councillor Hayhurst is seconding that. <coughs> Yes, I am. And um, what I would suggest is it filed officers that actually do the support work here. Right. That is now then the, 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 the relevant issue which we, is now on the table. Councillor Silverwood had a hand up. I don't know whether that was in relationship 
to the proposition or to the amendment. Um, if it was well, the proposition, then you're going to have to wait. If it's the amendment, then you can speak. I, I can speak to the amendment, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Um, at first, just put my hand up to second it, but as Councillor Hayhurst has done this, I'm, I'm quite happy to speak to the amendment now, if that's OK. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what I would like to do, first of all, is give members a little bit more of their background about the Friends of the Parks. Um, as Councillor Buckley said, it's been um, in existence for approximately three years. It's actually, it was actually started and formed by um, one of my members of staff. And as a mum of a little boy, um, typically um, a group of mums getting together wanting to improve the park facilities where they live. She started um, this group and um, in the background I've given her a lot of advice. You know, why, why would mums be expected to know where to start? So I pointed in the direction because of the experience of, of Kirkham, um, as Council Rose was saying before. In those three years that this group has uh, been in existence, up to now they have raised £7,000. That £7,000 has been raised by the usual ways, the typical ways of um, fun days, raffles, etc, etc. A lot of hard work goes into those um, by the usual individuals. What my um, staff member has explained to me over the last three years, she's had um, the group have had a, an uphill battle where businesses and residents are concerned in, in Freckleton. Because when they've gone round trying to get raffle prizes yes. or you know whatever's required, what everybody, she said, is saying in Freckleton over and over and over again is, why on earth are you having to try and raise monies for the park when we all know as residents in Freckleton that there is a huge amount of money that has been left by because of the, the accident, because of the American um, warplane, and also they're aware of the Rawstrom Fund. So she's constantly banging her head against uh, a brick wall. The residents in Freckleton want to know why Freckleton Parish Council hasn't supported them. The, par the Parks Group have attended many, many Parish Council uh, meetings, and when they have requested money from the Parish Council, um, whether it be from the, the pot of money, as Council Rose said before. Now, when, when I saw that amount of money, when um, Mr O'Donoghue sent the figures through, and it came through to us all as £579,000, I actually, because I was on my iPad, I actually stretched the screen looking for the decimal point. I was staggered to see that it was £579,000. The Parks Group, on their requests to the Parish Council, have been advised on a number of times that um, only interest is, is spent, the Parish Council decides to whom that money will go to, but in three years they have been unsuccessful in getting a penny from Freckleton Parish Council. Now I, I'm struggling to get my head around that when, when um, for the purposes for, for this money, for, the, it, for, the, it is for their village, but they're sitting on nearly a million pounds. The, when Councillor Buckley said before, um, when she was um, introducing the item, and she said two or three times, exceptional circumstances, that this council is looking at exceptional circumstances for giving Freckleton £50,000 from the capital fund. I'm a little confused as to why she thinks they are exceptional circumstances. Yes, of course, dreadful tragedy, and we're all aware of that. But Kirkham, Kirkham's Memorial Gardens is there in dedication to the soldiers, the Kirkham soldiers that were killed in the two wars. And Kirkham, as you heard before, has raised, by going out for funding, which this council and LCC council can advise any parks group um, that they can tap into this funding. So it's not exceptional. Um, and as we've also heard, and I'm sure Councillor Nolte will give you more detail shortly, that um, Western, Freckleton and Walton, with these groups that more often than not are made up of mums, 
have raised a huge amount of money. So, just to reiterate what Council Rhodes has said before, I'm not saying I'm against it. Of course, we all want fabulous far parks in our villages, but I'm against this council not looking into it in more depth when the parish is sitting on such a huge amount of money. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Armit, you had your hand up first, but I think it may have even been before we got to the amendment. Do you wish to speak now to the amendment? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I think Councillor Rhodes raises a lot of really good points, a lot of interesting points, and potentially worrying points. And um, I do think some investigation and some work needs to be done in that. Um, I'm not sure, though, if we should blur the two issues. Um, I, I, this isn't a political... We've been asked to say tonight, this is budget, not making it political. Let's not make it political. Um, let's not do that. We've been asked... We've been said tonight... The Independent Party may have a whip on, the Conservative Party does not. Um, the, the issue we've got here is not setting a precedent. This is a singular and particularly unique and tragic event. There is no relationship. As an ex-soldier, we have war memorials everywhere. We go out, we put green on, we die. It's what we do. This was a horrific, one-off incident. If you look at the big incidents in the Second World War, if you look at the Bethnal Green tube station with 90 people killed in that, denoticed so nobody could talk about it. It's had books, it's had movies made about it since. You look at the train crash in Scotland with 300 civilians killed, denoticed, not talked about, tragic. These are particular incidents. Very few people in the United Kingdom have ever heard of the Freckleton school children and who have been killed. It's not a big news. It's not known. If anything can be done to actually make this more public, that people can know more about it, then, then, then so much the better. <laughs> Councillor Nulty said we should, we should relax some of the purse strings. We should spend a bit more. Here's an opportunity to do that, and yet people are now speaking against it. Many people have sp spoken saying that we don't spend anything in the rural areas. Here's an opportunity to do that, and you're speaking against it. It doesn't make sense. It's a counter-argument. It's a circular argument. This is a one-off spend. This is something that is unique and very particular to our area. It is not a memorial memorial. It's not a park. It's not like it, it is in a particular memorial to a particular tragic event in a park that is a memorial. And therefore, I think we should actually make this contribution and we should allow Freckleton to move forward with it. Councillor Nelty, please. Okay. At the risk of, uh, of repeating things and, and probably being misunderstood, um, as usual, um, although I welcome any improvement to play areas in the borough, most of us have had to achieve this through forming POTS friends groups, which have been able to apply for external grants not available to parish councils or the borough council. It has to be done through through a, a, a group such as this. Many grants are available and most of us, and I'm sure you know, there are parts groups in Lytham, Anson, Towns and Ansdell that have benefited from the same sort of grants. There are grants available from waste companies, environmental funds, etc. As Councillor Rose has already said, at Wesson we were actually charged £5,000 by our own parks staff for administering our project. Not a penny was given to us from this authority. Though we were fortunate, or unfortunate enough, to have some Section 106 money, as many other projects on this capital list today have. So the capital list includes a lot of things with Section 106 monies, and we are not actually giving them anything. We are using the money that is proper to them from the Section 106 monies. As Councillor Rhodes I said, I, all, I do believe this could set a precedent for other, other areas. I was born in and lived in Freckleton for many years, and I know all the stories and all the funds and things that have gone on there. 
I know that the Americans who donated this park in the first place have always been very generous and very concerned about what happened. It wasn't their fault, but it happened and it was Ameri an American plane that went down. And they've always been very concerned about the upkeep of this area and have been very generous and I believe they gave quite a large donation on the 60th anniversary of this event. There was also a public subscription fund which was completely separate for Frettleton. Those funds still exist. And I'm not against this project. Far from it. I believe it should go ahead. But I do feel that more information about all types of other monies that are available is necessary before we go, a go ahead. Certainly, even the interest for a couple of years from the two funds held in Freckleton could go a long way towards the cost of the project. All that the proposition is asking for is to delay a decision on this and get more information about it. And I would hope that everybody in the room could agree with that. Thank you. Councillor Chew. Uh, I have Councillor Nash first, then Councillor Chew. Councillor Nash, please. Councillor Ed Nash, that is. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, we've been having a budget today which is figures in black and white. Um, we've been balances, we're looking at projections and all the rest of it. And there is an opportunity within a budget to show more than just cold hard figures and that's to actually show the heart of Fylde Borough. Last year in August was the 70th anniversary of the Freckleton disaster. You attended it Mr Mayor. Indeed. And um, the BBC called it the hidden disaster. But they likened it to Aberfan and Dunblane in its seriousness. And as a lad in St Anne's, being brought up in the 50s, to me, Freckleton was a great symbol. We had an easy war in some ways in Fylde. I think we had a bomb on Church Road in St Anne's and that was about it. Um, but when this happened, it was overshadowed by the fact that the Allies had just taken Paris. Everything was going really well. And then this, this ripped the heart out of not just Freckleton, which it really <coughs> hurt, but also the rest of us here in Fylde. What they're proposing isn't an ordinary park. It can't be compared to any other park. I mean, I led the veterans on... Uh, opening the new homecoming park in Fleetwood this year and even that doesn't compare to this because this disaster concerned the whole of the community in Fylde. The, the US Air Force lost men, 11 of them, 6 RAF civilians, 30 odd children and the teachers. And Growing up, my grandfather, who managed to go through two wars, said it was the worst thing that he'd ever known. If you mentioned it to my grandmother, she used to put a penny over her head, as they did in those days, because she, could had, she had to hide the tears. Now, this is not just an ordinary thing. We have a stake in this. Fileborough has a stake in this. And I believe that one-third of the money that they are looking for shows that our compassion is an opportunity at the end of this council before another one starts to show that what it all means. I don't think we can compare it with all the little projects that are going here and I want some money there and all the rest of it. I think we have to speak on this from our hearts and I certainly will support that we give that amount of money and oppose any amendment to it. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillor Chew, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I represent three small villages and very fortunately they didn't suffer a disaster like Freckleton. What happened in 1944 was an utter disaster beyond our comprehension. And I don't think anybody begrudges Freckleton their park 
and I don't think anybody would begrudge them this money as long as, as has been said, all avenues have been explored to find that money elsewhere. And I say that because in my three little villages that I represent, until I came on this council, there was no park at all. And when I first came on this council, 12 years ago, I applied to file Borough Council, first of all, for some money to help us make a car park, because we'd no car park at the Village Hall. And I asked for £25,000. It was refused. A few years later, I might add that the people, the parish councillors themselves, actually, we were given the land, or leased the land, and they actually worked themselves and borrowed 25,000. We've had to pay it back. We're still paying it back. Next thing that we needed in our village was the park. We were again leased the land, so we got land, which some villages haven't even got land to build a park. We were very fortunate we were leased land. Mm -hmm. I asked again, what could Fileborough Council do to help me? Not only did they refuse to give a grant of any description, but I couldn't even get any help to help me go and find grants elsewhere. And I'd not been on the council very long, so I didn't even know where to begin. And then we came to the third one, only three years ago. We needed money to rebuild our uh, village hall. A village hall that serves not only my three parishes uh, uh, that I represent, three villages that I represent, but actually a, a village hall that was used very, very widely. And again, I came to Fowler and said, please, I begged, please, will somebody help me do either a lottery grant or a grant of some description? <laughs> the answer was no. You can do it if you'll pay for it, but not otherwise. Now, why are the children and the people of my parish, in spite of us not suffering a disaster, not as important as the people and children in the rest of this borough? Why are my children, that I represent the parents of, not given any consideration at all? Uh, this is my 12th year on this council. And as Councillor Hayhurst has already said, because he knows, because I frequently go and ask him, what, what, what can he do? He's got more experience than I have. What can we do? And the answer from Fylde is always no. Now, that's fine. If, if, if you all want to vote to give Freckleton this money tonight, in spite of the fact that you know that they're sitting on nearly a million pounds and haven't explored, to your knowledge, any other place to get this money from, that's fine. But an application from Singleton will be in directly. And if we are also refused, well, I'll have to explore why we're refused and why my children and my families are not in the same category as the Freckleton families. So obviously, for those people who think that it's absolutely a superb idea and why shouldn't Freckleton have this £50,000, I would like them to know that the three villages, the three small villages that I represent, who that have got one play area that was put in with money that, that uh, my parish council raised, why are we not as important? Thank you. Councillor Speak. Um, you, five minutes is considered the maximum time, and I um, don't want to wish to spoil anybody's uh, presentation, but I think we are now starting to get repetitive. If you bear that in mind, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I wasn't going to speak at all, actually, but I do feel the need to say something because I've lost the will to live down here. When I listen to Councillor Nash talk about a hidden tragedy that happened in Freckleton, I wholeheartedly agree. We all live with tragedies. But I'm more concerned about the hidden fortune in Freckleton. And I can just see the headlines, can't you? More worryingly is we have Freckleton Parish Council who must be aware of all this money in trust 
and in savings account who haven't come forward themselves to this group of mothers and parks and say, don't struggle, we've got enough money in these savings accounts and in trust to do all the work for the memorial garden because that money was given to us to do jobs like that. The other thing that I find very strange is Councillor Buckley, has she been aware of all the money that's in trust and in savings in Freckleton? And granted, if she hasn't known about it, then she would support this capital bid. But if she's known about it and the Cabinet know about it, and two of the Cabinet members of Freckleton Parish Councillors I don't like this at all. And it should be deferred for further investigation. It looks untransparent and it looks wrong to the wider public of Falbury. Thank you. I'm sure we'll get to Councillor Buckley in a few minutes, but we have two other speakers and I hope then we can move on. Councillor Presswich first, Councillor Collins. Well, thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillor um, is also. I feel, well, I think it's been very, very delicate, to, you know, sort of ground this we're on. And I feel that um, if there's any doubt about anything where a certain amount of money is concerned and what I've heard tonight has been quite distressing I do, I'll admit it I do remember that rather dreadful happening I was only quite small at the time but I do remember I'll admit it and it, I know what impact it had with children in schools and things like that around, I lived in Black well, just in Blackpool that time uh, but I do feel that not to just forget it, but a deferment would be the best policy and the right policy. Because if in a doubt, you know what the motto is, do not. Thank you. Councillor Collins, please, followed by Councillor Beckett. And that, I think, is the final person for speaking. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I think uh, Councillor Chu missed one item out. Um, we used to have a, a system where any group in, in, in the file could bid for, for a cap make a capital bid for, for uh, an amount of money for, for a project. It could be a parish council, it could be a, a scout group, whatever. Um, I think that, that system was done away with because basically we were collecting money from taxpayers and giving it away. Um, now I sat on the, on the group that discussed um, all these applications about ten years ago. There's myself, Councillor no Noseworthy, I think Councillor Hyde, um, and I think there's either uh, Mr Curtis or Mr White. And we spent the, the whole afternoon going through these applications and we had strict criteria to measure them against. Um, there were things like, did they have match funding? Did they have external funding? And how many people would benefit? And would people in neighbouring uh, uh, wards benefit? Or was it just particularly for one ward? And we went through all the applications, we marked them, and it, you know, I was working with Conservatives, and when we sat down, we all worked together. Some of the applications we had to pull out again to see if we'd marked them right or not, and adjust, adjust the, the scores we gave them. And of those applications, there are some that I would have loved to have given the money to. One of them was to Councillor Chu. It was money for, for the, uh, the roof, for the, the village hall. But it didn't meet all the criteria. It got turned down. There was other applications that I personally wasn't bothered about. But they, they scored highly and they got the money. Now, if we are going back to a system where we are going to be giving away taxpayers' money, we should have criteria to measure them against. We should be going back to a system like that and not merely giving away taxpayers' money willy-nilly, perhaps just before an election. Um, I don't think I've got anything else to say other than I'm not against the scheme and I'd love to have it scored uh, against strict criteria and if it's scored highly, I'd be only too glad to award the money to that scheme. 
Thank you. Councillor Beckett, please. Yes, Mr Mayor. One of the things that I'd like to say is the people in Freckleton are putting the work in to try and get this memorial garden brought up to scratch and everything else, but the council's doing nothing. Far, as Farborough are trying, but what about Freckleton Town Parish Council? Freckleton Parish Council hold all the strings, can pull all the strings, and I think they're trying to pull a fast one in this chamber. I don't go along with it. I want it deferring, as Councillor Rose is saying, and at the end of the day, this play area has got a limit on it and an age limit. And the age limit on it is that nobody over the age of 11 should play on it. Thank you. Councillor Vashton. Mate, it's only a question in that what will the um, what will the budget say if this amendment's carried? Because my understanding is that you have to set a budget here tonight. Now, you can't set a budget on deferments. Surely it's either in or it's out. I'd, I'd just like to add some clarification on that. Is it going to be in? If this if amendment's carried, will the £50,000 for Faculty Memorial Park be in or will it be out? I want to be clear on what we're voting on. I, I, my understanding is, Mr May, you can't have a budget set on deferments. So it's got to be concrete, in or out. Thank you. Councillor Buckley, are you ready or do you want to hear the outcome of this discussion amongst officers? Ready? Our understanding is that the £50,000 would remain in the budget, but it would be subject to checks and further investigation into whether funding has been fully explored through other avenues and the Parish Council. And, and it would have to come back to the full council to then release it. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor Buckley? Yeah, I'm just lifting it for you. I'm just hanging on because Councillor Buckley is um, taking advice. Pardon? No. No. She hasn't. Do you want a brief deferment? Do you want a brief deferment or are you in a position to respond, Councillor Buckley? Is everybody happy for a five minute adjournment? I take it that that is yes. Five minute adjournment. I think it's a question of getting the right resolution that keeps everybody hopefully happy. And I think we need to bring in officers here. I think, Councillor Rhodes, that the cap. The cap could everybody be quiet while there are speakers? Councillor Rhodes, I believe that they're asking for deferment so that they can consider some of the points that have been raised and get a consensus from the Cabinet. And the officers. And the officers, yeah? Yeah, just for some further advice. That five minute adjournment is now starting. Is, is that okay with everybody for a five minute adjournment? <laughs>
I'm sure five minutes is up by now, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Silverwater. If everybody could re reconvene, that would be helpful. <laughs> Seats, please. Or you can listen standing and drinking if you want. Um, I think I will now call upon Councillor Karen Buckley. It's pleased to sum up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thank you very much for allowing that um, brief adjournment. The, there has been some uh, misleading information shared tonight from council members, um, and I was I'm quite, I'm quite happy to correct that. And I think one of the things that certainly needs to be corrected, because it has been suggested that Feckleton Parish Council itself has not supported um, the Friends Group, and that is simply not the case. Um, they've set aside £20,000 to support the Friends Group for this project. Um, so it would not be right to allow members to, to feel or to believe that the Parish Council itself was not supported. I think also um, there's a lot of confusion about who owns different pots of money for what purpose and who has access to it. And, uh, and of course that's um, what has been suggested unsettles members and the information that I have is that there has been a, a bequest, there is a trust set up. The terms of the trust are that the capital cannot be accessed and therefore when it's suggested that Freckleton has all this money and yet if, uh, if it is the case that it's capital to be invested and that the money that can be accessed is the income, um, and that that income must be dispensed equally between, I understand, between churches and recreational clubs in the village. The maximum grants from this trust in the year tend to be around the £2,000 mark. They also has talked about the Memorial Trust, that has been mentioned as well tonight, which is run independently of the parish council so again i think it's quite muddied as to who has these funds for what purpose who has access to them nevertheless um there has been you know a lot of a lot of comment tonight and questions raised and there has been the circulation of some of these answers and correspondence between the parish council um quite late in the day mm. Therefore, I would like to suggest whether it is in line with the, the, amend, the amendment put forward, but I think I'd like to tighten it up. I would like to suggest that this money remains in the budget, in the capital programme, and that it is not released until further, question, for these, uh, further questions are explored, but that we've set a time frame on that and that we make a decision at the next council meeting. 
which will then clear, clear that way forward for the next financial year. We will have a, a sound decision. And uh, if, if the answers, um, if council is satisfied, then the monies can be released in support. So it's, it's along the lines suggested, but I'd just like to tighten it up in that the money remains in the budget. It is released once questions and answers have been, once we've sought clarification on these issues, and a decision is made, it's brought back to the next council meeting. And that is a maybe that's a further amendment, but I would therefore ask for a seconder. I find that very helpful, and to some degree I'm constrained by how many times people can come back backwards and forwards, but I do think in these extenuating circumstances, I think I'd like to be able, with your... <laughs> to ask both Councillor Odes and Councillor Hayhurst if they could just respond to what you've said, in the hope that what I think you're offering uh, can be as near as possible agreed. Are you, is everyone happy that I do that? I'm breaking the rules slightly, but I think it's a logical way forward. Councillor Rhodes, briefly. I'm, I'm perfectly happy uh, to accept that. Um, I just wonder if we can also look at the grant uh, question as well, because, as we pointed out, um, the parts group has not applied for any external funding. We know there's an awful lot of external funding out there, and I do believe that that should be looked at, and we should be speaking to the parks group but I also would like to be uh, very involved in finding the answers to some of these questions because I have quite a, a lot of stuff here okay, and well, uh, I, I really do want to drill down into all the answers to know exactly what the funding is, what it can be used for but okay. I think the parts group should be involved as well in this because they haven't applied for any external funding, it's our information and we have spoken to the chairman of the parts group today that all they have is £7,000 which they okay. have raised can I, just so I think it's important short there to get clarity. My understanding is that what was being suggested by Councillor Buckley was that further questions be explored and I think she would welcome the sorts of questions that you want to come to her and anybody else so that it comes within that ambit of questions to be explored and that was the offer and I think it can be inclusive I hope. Councillor Hayhurst a second and briefly. Well, Mr. Mayor, can I um, say that um, I'm delighted that Councillor Buckley has agreed to this, and uh, I think it's a very sensible decision that she's she's come to. Um, again, I, I like um, Councillor Rhodes um, feel that um, they should look at the uh, at the grant situation. I say again, I, okay. I am quite happy for Farborough Council. In fact, I feel that no matter what the grant situation is, or what the okay. or, or what the finance situation is of the parish council, that Farborough should make a grant for this but I do feel that our capital receipts are finite and what we should do is make sure that they go as far as they can and therefore I'd like to see at least the grant situation explored. Thank you. Thank you Councillor Buckley for doing what you have done. I think um, we now would like the Chief Executive to put this agreement into legal words that we can all then vote for. Do you need a five minute break? <laughs> Is there anything further you have to say? We're continuing to deal with it as an amendment. I was just checking whether Councillor Buckley was able to propose an alternative recommendation um, that was consistent with the amendment. But I'm told we're still dealing with it as an amendment then. Um, and the amendment is to not release, not release any further money until not to, to keep the money in the budget but not to release it until further questions are explored and a decision is made at the next council I, I think one of the challenges we have is that this is this budget council which is slotted in between uh, the next ordinary council the deadline date for reports to be submitted to the next full council is the 14th of March or the 15th? 17th of March. It, it could be a challenge to investigate all those issues and produce an appropriate report in that time frame. Can we say a further council rather than the next council? Okay. 
I think it is wished that this is dealt with during this um, uh, financial year. And therefore... Surely, Mr Mayor, it's better to be dealt with thoroughly yeah. than try to rush this. And I would, if it can be dealt with in time for the 14th, fair enough. If it can't, we must get the right answers. I know we have an election coming and people are wanting to get this out of the way, but I do believe that it's better to get this done properly instead of going with haste. Well, I'm trying to get a decision that's agreeable. It seems to me that a report should come to the next council, whatever it says, and that also we should be understanding if some of that information at that next council is delivered a little bit late. So, if then we can't reach a decision at the next council, well, that's for the next council to decide what it does. But I'm particularly pleased that we've got as far as we have. And would you like to read out uh, virtually what I said, or shall I say it again? Um, I'd, I'd be more content if Councillor Buckley would confirm what, she, what she's proposing. Councillor Silverwood and Councillor Ashton have already spoken on this item. If the Mayor continues to well, go against the procedure rules, I can't override that. It was just for clarification, Mr Mayor, that's all. It wasn't to speak again, it was just for clarification on what we will actually be voting for. Yeah, I tried to, to do the same. It, all, my question was, um, these decisions being made and questions being asked to be brought forward to whether it be the next council meeting or another one, who is actually involved in asking these questions and, and, may, and uh, in the investigation? I'd like clarification on that, please. Right. Councillor Buckley, um, you've got us off to a good start. Can you just polish up the details uh, dealing with what has just been said, please? Sorry to trouble you again. All right, thank you. Um, I do feel it, should, it needs to come back to the next council. I think we should rise to the challenge for that. If for any reason there is information lacking at that time, we will make a decision at that time. But I do think that we need to set that expectation. And you'd welcome anybody sending to you as quickly as possible any details that you'd like the officers to look at. I would, I would like the officers to undertake the investigation and of course members will be able to input into that as, the, as they have done uh, already by raising queries and, and questions directly to the officers which of course they have every right to do. So I would welcome that and ask for the officers to coordinate that. And I think what is also being asked um, from the Leader of the Opposition is whether she can be kept informed of what's happening. I'm sure she will be. No problem with that. Okay. Now, we have, as I think, a revised amendment then. Can we now get back to proper procedure and ask you, please, Chief Executive, to put that into legal language? Thank you. We're now going to have a recorded vote on the amendment that says the capital remains in the budget until the questions are explored, are explored and a report is brought forward to the next meeting of the full council to, to make a decision on whether the, the money actually goes, then goes into the budget. I would urge you to support that, having listened also to what Councillor Butley has said, which I'm sure she will not renege on with regard to detail. Excuse me, do you want me to second Just to be absolutely correct, uh, Mr Mayor, I don't think there has been a second that I stand to second Councillor Buckley. Thank you very much. I, I know, Charlie. Um, go make, make your points of order. <laughs> it's not a point, it's a point of disorder, to be honest. I mean, this is just ridiculous. It, it, it might be ridiculous, but we're getting, we're getting. So, so this is, this is. I, I mean, I, I appreciate the fact you're being pragmatic and you're just trying to get to a solution, but, um, and I'm not going to object to that on this occasion. Thank you. Um, can we have, first of all, as opposed to reading out just some lines of an amendment, it's not clear what it is amending, so can we have the... My motion? understanding is it is, a, it, it is a, sli a revised amendment. So, so we need, originally, the, the Councillor Buckley's original proposal 
and then the amendment or the revised amendment or whatever you want to call it uh, yeah. saying which bits of the original motion that is amending and I believe that it is Councillor Rhodes's amendment, not Councillor Buckley's. Indeed, and we'll be voting so on the amendment the, and then on the, the original motion, motion and, and we'll what it's amending, twice on what the same thing if we're not careful. Yes. <laughs> and then, can I have a, a point of order and say, can we just go to the vote then? <laughs> <laughs> right, I Councillor agree. Duffy. <laughs> uh, come on, can I clarify it? Please. Yeah. Right, the original proposal is to include £50,000 capital for a ski to a contribution towards the Freckleton Memorial Gardens. That's the original proposal. The amendment, uh, which has been outside of our rules, agreed and, and, and manipulated a little, but it is that the money remains in the budget until questions have been explored and a report is brought to the next meeting of the full council. Uh, that, that, that report would, uh, would actually be one that says the money is now, it, it's, it, it's staying in the budget now, but it would then be released into the capital programme if it was approved. At the next council. At, at the, the next council. council. At the further council. Is anyone still unclear about this? I'm happy to go through it again. I'll take Charlie's advice and we'll go straight to the recorded vote. <laughs> okay, again, if members could indicate, please, whether they're for, against, or abstaining. And that's for the amendment. So that's Councillor Ackers, please. For. Councillor Aitken. For. Councillor Ackroyd. For. Councillor Andrews. For. Councillor Armit. For. Councillor Susan Ashton. For. Councillor Tim Ashton, Four. Councillor Beckett, Four. Councillor Brickles, I'm oh, not here, sorry, Four. Councillor Buckley, Four. Councillor Chedd, Councillor Chew, Four. Councillor Clayton, Four. Councillor Collins, Four. Councillor Craig Wilson, Four. not here, gone, Councillor Cunningham, Four. Councillor John Davis, Four. Councillor Leonard Davis, Four. Councillor Donaldson, Four. Councillor Duffy, Abstain. Councillor Eaves, Four. Councillor Pazakali, Councillor Fiddler, I'm not here, sorry, <laughs> but Councillor Ford, Four. Councillor Goodrich, Four. Councillor Hayhurst, Four. Councillor Henshaw, Four. Councillor Hopwood, Four. Councillor Jakes, Four. Councillor Little, Four. Councillor Barbara Nash, Councillor Edward Nash, Councillor Nulty, Councillor Odes, Councillor Pounder, Councillor Presswich, Councillor Redcliffe, Councillor Lou Rigby, and I've gone, sorry, Councillor Silverwood, Councillor Singleton, Councillor Speak, Councillor Wilder, the Mayor. See how I helped to broker it. Yeah, I will vote for it. <laughs> Councillor Henshaw. Um, well, Mr. Mayor, that is clearly carried. Um, this now becomes a substantive motion, but rather than taking the recorded vote again, can I suggest that if members um, would indicate if they had um, any differing vote pattern rather than having to uh, repeat it again, that might be the pragmatic approach. Uh, and if there are no uh, hands indicating otherwise, I'll take that as Councillor Duffy. <laughs> Yeah, now, now that this is the substantive motion, then I would vote for the motion this time. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Duffy. Thank you very much for your patience. And somebody said what rules were made for people to occasionally vary, and I think we've done the right thing tonight. Thank you very much. Can we call in the people who've been uh, dying to outside and? Uh, We'll try not to keep you waiting, Councillor, for Zachary for so long. Do you to Yeah, I did say. I did say. Yeah. 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 Is it one of these exhibitions? Um, we'll discuss yeah. it tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Well done, folks. Yeah. 
ask Councillor Buckley now. Go. Councillor Buckley, it's your turn again. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Well, um, in the spirit of consensus, I'll move the final, <laughs> final item, Good. which is the contribution um, to the Lowther Pavilion, the replacement of the roof, and that is for a stage contribution, £8,000 in the forthcoming financial year, and the majority of the work, £115,000 in the year after. The request for funding to repair the roof at Lowther Pavilion has been with this council since the transfer of the asset to the Trust and was a project considered as part of the transfer but the capital was not available to support such a bid. The asset was transferred with a commitment to consider the request to support the repair of the roof if funds become available with an expectation that some contribution will be made by the Trust. The theatre is a strategic asset that attracts patrons from across the Fylde in the wider northwest region and the only facility in the borough that can accommodate the artists and productions that are now being attracted to the venue. It is an important part of the entertainment and tourism offering that has a positive impact on the local economy and reputation of the area. This is the third year that the roof has been considered for capital funding. The scheme now proposed is phased as I've said, over two years. It allows time for surveys design tendering to take place in the first year and works in the second and requires a one-year lead-in to allow the trustees to plan for the temporary closure of the building whilst work takes place, along with alternative arrangements for productions to continue. The lead-in time also allows the trustees to seek external funding for other improvements they have in mind to improve the experience of customers which could take place whilst the works to the roof is underway. Um, in terms of the figures, it's important to note that since the transfer of uh, Lowther Pavilion to the Trust, the support from revenue from Fowlborough has decreased year on year. So in 12-13, Fowl's contribution uh, subsidy, you may say, is was 70, just over 71,000, 71 and a half, and the estimated subsidy for um, next year 38,600, and the year after 31,600. So the subsidy, the support from revenue that Files is offering to the trust, has been decreasing year on year, and is a clear incentive for them with their business plan uh, moving forward. And as a total contribution to Lowther Pavilion the cost to this council and to the gardens um, when you look at the figures from again out go back a few years to 11 12 the total cost uh, to filed for allow the pavilions gardens was 274,800 and the estimated cost for the year after next is 144,600 so a real difference in the amount that, filed, that it's costing filed. Um, that saving for next year equates to 130,000, just over 130,000 on our revenue budget. We are asked to support this scheme to repair this roof, to, to replace the roof and to put up the capital cost, but to bear in mind that we will be recovering £50,000 from the trust. That would be the agreement. They would pay £50,000 back over a 10-year period, £5,000. And that, again, has been shown. It's reflected in the agenda papers before you tonight. So the real um, cost to the capital over time would be £73,000 to deliver a brand new roof for Lowther. I do hope it has the support of this council. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Thwellfall, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'm very happy to support this item. Thank you. It is uh, now open to debate. Councillor Oates, please. Thank you, Chair. Well, um, again, I did ask questions about this at Policy ONS. Um, I um, haven't seen a copy of the Lowther accounts. 
Um, I have spoken to officers about it and they tell me that they meet regularly with the trustees to make sure that everything is going along okay. Um, I did ask the question um, are they breaking even, are they making a loss, are they making a profit and it was suggested that perhaps they were more or less breaking even. That is with the subsidy so I really have to make the point that if they're breaking even with the subsidy then um, the subsidy stops next year or the year after um, we may be getting further requests for uh, more subsidy in the future. Um, and the money that they're paying back, they will be using our money to actually pay us back. Now, I'm not saying I'm against this either. I just make the point and make the point that um, in the future we may see more um, call for uh, subsidies and um, when we were actually um, putting um, this uh, facility to the trust we were told it would save us money on maintenance and I just worry a little bit uh, looking at the response from the trust that that may not be the case so again I, I issued a health warning with the budget earlier I issue a health warning with this that there could be further drains on our resources later uh, on um, in the, the uh, prolonged forecast. Thank you. Councillor Hayhurst. <coughs> well, mine's a question, actually, because um, in the old committee system, everybody got all the information and you knew what um, the decision by the committee um, was being, what, what, what information the, the, the committee was basing the information on. Now, I've heard from Councillor Buckley that we may or may not have made some sort of commitment when we transferred um, Lowther to the Trust, um, and it was a case of if we had some money, we might, might, might contribute to, to, to the new roof. Can I ask from the officers, what is the agreement with the document that the two um, bodies signed to say what the future maintenance would be? Was it the trust that should maintain the building? Was it the, the council? And um, what the situation was with regard to any agreement on the roof? If you can read it out to us, I'd be delighted so I know what I'm voting for. Could I just remind you, of course, this isn't a question and answer session, that really you're speaking to the amendment. A lot of those questions, as I think was said in an email we all got a week or so ago, could have been usefully asked uh, during that time. Now, if that information is readily available, fine, but I say it would have been helped if it had been asked for earlier. <laughs> Councillor Hopwood, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have no problem at all in agreeing to this funding for the new roof. However, I have a question relating to um, the subsidy, the repayment of this subsidy. The £50,000 that they're going to return to us, um, where are they going to get this money from on the basis that we continue to subsidise while the pavilion? Thank you. Notes are being made. Does anyone else wish to speak to this item? Sorry. Councillor Silverwood. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, Councillor Buckley has um, given us the figures for the year on year with the subsidies and the, the costs, etc. Um, I'd just like to comment on the figure of um, year 11-12. Um, that when, um, before the trustees took over, we, we've just been given the figure of £274,800. And of course, it does look great that it's been reduced to 144000 now that it's in the hands of the trustees. But of course, we all know as councillors that that figure of 274800 is including the on-costs with it. And for anybody that doesn't understand that, by that I mean it will have included HR, IT, the chief exec's wages, etc., etc. So that isn't a fair way of breaking, breaking this down. And yes, um, as Councillor Hopwood and Councillor Rhodes have said, it concerns me that um, with the roof um, maintenance and being replaced, 
How on earth can the trustees pay this back if they're only just breaking even? It just doesn't. It just doesn't make sense. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, he's already spoken. Well, Mr. I'm, I'm, I'm just asking whether I'm going to get an answer to my question. This is a budget meeting, yep. and surely if I'm voting on something, I need to know what the facts are. You have asked, and I've said that notes are being taken, but I've also said it's not a question and answer session. Throw the Constitution out the window. Did you wish to speak, uh, Councillor Ashton? Yeah. <laughs> I do, Mr. M Mr. Mayor. I think it's it's <laughs> it's dreadful. Uh, an experienced councillor like Councillor Hayes should try and speak twice on the, uh, an item. I can't believe it. Uh, we should be we, <laughs> we should be supporting this, Mr. Mayor. It's the only theatre in the borough, uh, and it's long overdue this repair. It's been asked for for the last three years. Uh, we we have to support the arts in in filed. Uh, many theatre goers and amateur uh, productions are um, uh, take place at Lauda and, it, and, it's, and it's up to us to support it. And as, for, as regards the revenue situation with the Trust, that's something that a future council I think will have to consider seriously because uh, uh, for the longevity of Lauda I think this, um, budget, this uh, subsidy that we give them will have to be seriously looked at because I along with other members feel as though they may well not be able to survive without uh, some help from the council. That's for the future. Thank you. Would you like to sum up, please, yes. Yes, I'm delighted to sum up. Thank you. <laughs> um, councillors, have faith. This uh, Lowther Pavilion has gone from strength to strength since it was handed out. I, I'm sure people, many people would agree with me. It's gone from strength to strength since it was handed over to the trustees. And those of you who go to the theatre and support those events will see that evidently. And sometimes packed houses um, supporting Lowther Pavilion and sell out, a sell out tonight. And the point about all the doom mongers about how are they going to sustain this and how are they not going to come back for more money? They have sustained this on a reducing subsidy year on year, which is why I say to you have a little faith. 12-13, we were giving them £71,500. Um, next year, that will be £31,500. And they are meeting their requirements and they are balancing the books and we do keep a very close eye on that and have had a good working relationship with Lau the Trust and assisting with the finances and the trustees that they've brought on board and the calibre of the trustees they've brought on board has, uh, has increased and gone from strength to strength as well. So have a little faith. Um, I'd be pleased if Council will support this. It is uh, desperately needed, a new roof. That will only help them to secure and seek more <coughs> funds to increase the facility, to pack it out for further for, for further um, for further theatre goers and, and uh, some great events that they hold there. Um, and so I, I do hope that we can all support this item. Thank you. Right, the vote will now be taken. Again, it has to be a recorded vote. The monitoring officer, please. Mayor, could I remind you, I had a question which I asked. Could I have an answer? Because I'm voting, I'm voting £100,000 and I don't know what the conditions yes, are. Yes, I've just turned to the Chief Executive to give you an answer. Um, I could remind Councillor Hayes and other members that if you require an answer to a question, then there is a standing item on the Council agenda for members to put forward questions. Unfortunately, it's not always possible to answer questions on the night that are quite detailed. I can, if you wish to see a copy of the agreement, we will forward it to you after this meeting. But we do not, I'm not aware that any officer has that a copy of that agreement on them at this moment in time. To the vote. The vote, please. Okay, Mr. Mayor, uh, if we take the recorded vote, again, if members could indicate if they're for, against, or abstaining. So this is to support the amount of money being included in the budget. Councillor Ackers. For. Councillor Aitken. For. Councillor Ackeroyd. For. Councillor Andrews. For. Councillor Armit. For. Councillor Susan Ashton. For. Councillor Tim Ashton. For. Councillor Beckett. Councillor Buckley, Councillor Chad, Councillor Chu, 
Councillor Clayton. Councillor Collins. Councillor Cunningham. Councillor John Davis. Councillor Leonard Davis. Councillor Donaldson. Councillor Duffy. Councillor Eaves. Councillor Fiddler. Councillor Ford. Councillor Goodrich. Councillor Hayhurst. Councillor Howard Henshaw. Councillor Hotwood. Councillor Jakes. Councillor Little. Councillor Barbara Nash. Councillor Edward Nash. Councillor Nulty. Councillor Oates. Councillor Pounder. Councillor Presswich. Councillor Redcliffe. Councillor Rigby. Councillor Silverwood. Councillor Singleton. Councillor Speak. Councillor Threlfall. Councillor Wilder. The Mayor. Four. And Councillor Karen Henshaw. Abstain. Okay, I'll just verify those votes. Thank you very much. Um, we're counting them, but I don't think there's any doubt that the motion has been carried. The score being...